Hey everybody, this is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this double-sided afghan. Okay, um, before I tell you the multiples, I want to tell you a little bit about this stitch. This stitch is a yarn eater, which means it takes a lot of yarn to make, but the end result uh, is a very beautifully textured, warm afghan that will ooh and all your friends. So. It's worth it for sure, uh, but the multiples for the size, it makes, makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay, so the multiples of this stitch is eight plus two, but when you, usually you would do multiples of eight, multiples of eight, in this case, since the, the multiples is eight plus two, you would do eight, 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 chains of eight, not eight chains of eight, but <laughs> eight, you would crochet in sets of eight until you reached your desired size. And then you would just say, okay, I'm gonna add that plus two now, because it's eight plus two, and then you'll be ready to go. But in this blanket, it's not quite like that because once you start to crochet, it starts to shrink a little bit. So your ending uh, desired size will need to be expanded a little bit. So what I recommend, and I'll show you my little sample piece here, is I did three sets of eight. So I did eight, eight, and eight, and then plus two. And it gave me um, a little shell for every eight stitches that I had. So every, every chain of eight will give you about four centimeters or about an inch and a half. So you can go off that, that's the gauge for every eight stitches. I'm forever eight chains. But if you don't want to do the math and get all technical about it, you can do what I did, which is I just crocheted a multiples of eight, 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 eight until I reached my desired size. I guess that I lost about one fourth of the total size that I had. So for instance, if you wanted to do like this size afghan, then when you made your chain, you would make this size chain plus take about a fourth of the size of the afghan because it's going to shrink. So take about one fourth of the total size of your desired size and then crochet about this much more. So you're going to want to crochet one, two, three, four, five, five more sets of eight to reach the desired size that you want. You understand? I hope this makes sense to you. <laughs> Oh, the total size of this afghan was 61 centimeters in length and 75 centimeters wide. And in inches, it's 24 inches in length and 30 inches wide. And this includes uh, the border. Okay, so I did, an, uh, I did a, a tutorial on this stitch in the past and I used it actually to, to make this one. And it's pretty good, though I wish I would have gone through it a little bit more and uh, and took you through at least a few more rows of it. So what I decided to do is uh, refilm the beginning so that you guys can find the gauge and everything like I just did. And then I'm going to start the old tutorial to show you how to, to do the stitch. But then I'm going to bring back and I'm going to film uh, taking you through a few more rows just so you won't have to do like I did when I was using the tutorial and having to try to figure out where I was. So hopefully I'll make it everything so much easier for you. Um, I'll have this pattern free on my webpage without pictures, but if you want uh, the PDF with pictures, and I have lots of pictures to help you by the way, uh, then you can find that on either of my shops and I'll have all the links down below and on my site as well. If you, if you go there to the free pattern, I'll have a link to the PDF there as well. I used a five millimeter hook or a size eight hook to make the stitch and everything except for the beginning chain. The beginning chain actually used, I went up one hook size just to make sure that I wouldn't make my beginning chain too tight. So and this is optional. You can use a six millimeter size J hook just to make your beginning chain and then switch on over to your five millimeter hook or a size H hook and then you can continue the rest of the afghan with that. And to make this small size afghan, I used three skeins of yarn and on the pattern page if you're interested in the kind of yarn because I've already given so much information I don't want to go into that too. 
uh, on video but if you want to check out the kind of yarn it, this is an old yarn I got you know years ago they might have discontinued it but you may find it on eBay you never know what you find or find something similar uh, but you can find all that information on the the website the pattern also calls for um, worsted weight yarn which is four ply for the US ten ply for Australia and this is the same kind of yarn that I used for the border as well. All of this is worsted weight yarn. Again, you want a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. So one, two, and then you want to skip three. One, two, three, and in this fourth chain you want to work three double crochets. One, two, And three, and then you'll chain three, one, two, three, and then working in that same stitch, you'll put three more double crochets. One, two, and three. So then you'll you'll skip three stitches again. One, two, three three and in this fourth one you'll single crochet and then you'll repeat that for the round again you'll skip three stitches three chains one two three and in this fourth you're going to work your three double crochets chain three three double crochets all worked in the same stitch so I've got my three double crochets then chain three and then three double crochets. And then again skip three, one, two, three, and in this fourth do a single crochet. Then again you'll skip three, one, two, three, and in the fourth you'll work your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. There's my three double crochets, chain three, in the same stitch you'll put your final three double crochets. Oops. Okay, then you'll skip three again, one, two, three, and in the fourth, which is the last chain, you'll put a single crochet to end row one. And that's what you should look like by the end of row one. Okay, for row two, you'll chain one and turn. You want a single crochet in this first single crochet of the row. Then you'll chain three, one, two, three, and now we're going to be working our double, sh double crochet cluster. We're going to be working a half double crochet cluster for the very first one. We're going to be using the first and third double crochet, not the middle one. We're going to be skipping this middle one. So since we're doing double crochets, you want to yarn over, you want to pick up the post of that first double crochet and pull through only two loops leaving the last two loops on your hook. Yarn over, skip the next double crochet and then this third pick up the post of that one. Pull through two, three loops on your hook. You want to yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, then you want to chain three, one, two, and three. And then you want to find this chain three here, you want to find the middle one. So you'll be doing it in the second chain out of this chain three and you'll single crochet in that middle chain. And then you'll chain three, one, two, three. Now we're about to do our full uh, double crochet cluster. And again we're going to be using we're going to be using this set of three and then this set of three for the, on the next one. And we're going to be using only the first and third and also the first and third of this one. We're always going to be skipping that middle double crochet. And we're going to be doing double crochets so you'll have to yarn over, pick up the post of the first double crochet, pull through only two. Yarn over, skip the next double crochet and go into the next and again only pull through two, 
three loops on your hook. Now come move over here to this set of three here. Make sure you don't grab the chain that's underneath, but that you have these three, because sometimes I messed up and went through here. So I just wanted to point that out for you. Always make sure that you have, you find your set of three clusters and go in through that first double crochet. Again, you'll only be pulling through two of the loops. Whoops, I forgot to yarn over first. Two of the loops, leaving the last one. You have four loops on your hook. Yarn over, skip the next, and then this final one here. Pull through only two. Now you have five loops on your hook. You'll yarn over and pull through all five loops to create your cluster. Then you'll chain three, one, two, and three. And again, you want to find this chain three that's between your two sets of three clusters here. And you'll single crochet in the top center chain here. And then you'll chain three again. And then you'll find your next set of three and three. And this is where you'll be working your next cluster. Yarn over, pick up your first one, pull through two skip the next one, go into the final one here, pull through two, three loops on your hook, then move on over to this next one, find the first double crochet, and then you'll skip the next one and do it in the final one, only pulling through two again, five loops on your hook, pull through all five loops, chain three, and then find again that center chain to do your single crochet in. Then chain three. Then we're going to be working our final cluster here. So you're going to yarn over and you'll go in through that first double crochet, only pulling through two. Skip the next and then you'll go into the final double crochet of the round. I'm oh, sorry, the row. You have three loops on your hook. Pull through all three loops and then this very last uh, stitch of the, the row, which is a single crochet, you'll want to put a double crochet in that. And that's, that ends row two. Okay, for row three, you want to start off by chaining four. One, two, three, and four. Then turn. And in your very first stitch here, we're going to work three double crochets. One, two, and three. Then we want a single crochet into the single crochet. Remember the single crochet we put in our chain, in the center of our chain three here? This is a single crochet that you want a single crochet in. which will bring us right to our cluster. Each cluster has this little circle, and a circle, a hole, a stitch that is made when you pull them all together and that center here is where you'll be working. So you'll do just like you did for the very first row. You're gonna be working your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all in that same stitch. So let's start putting my three double crochets and then chain three, and then my next three double crochets. There you go, just like we did before in row on row one. And then again, you'll wanna find this single crochet here and put a single crochet in it. And then again, find your next cluster hole, which is this one. And you'll be working your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all in that same stitch. Chain three, then three more double crochets. Then again, you'll single crochet in the top of your single crochet. And then to end your row, 
you want a single crochet, I mean, sorry, double crochet three, chain one, and then double crochet in the very last stitch. So in this this um, half, what you did a, a half um, cluster, you do have like a mini hole here. You're going to use that stitch to put three double crochets. Then you'll want to chain one. I almost forgot that. That's important. Chain one. And then in this very last stitch of the row here, you'll want to work your double crochet. And that is the end of row three. Okay, for row four, you'll chain one and turn. And in the very first stitch of the row, on the top of this double crochet here, you'll be putting a single crochet. Then you'll chain three. And now we have a, our cluster, first big cluster right off the bat. So you want to yarn over and you'll grab the post of the first double crochet here. Pull through only two. Skip the next double crochet and grab up the post of the third. Pull through only two. Now we'll move on over here to our next and again this is where you really need to make sure you don't grab that chain underneath that you have your set of three and when you know you do pick up the first post of the first double crochet and start your cluster. Yarn over, skip the next and then in this final one here pull through only two. Five loops on your hook pull through all five loops then chain three and then we're going to be single crocheting in that middle chain and then chain three again and then you're ready to start your next large cluster so using the first double crochet here only pulling through two, skip the next move on over here, make sure you have your set of three find it then when you do, grab up the first post, skip the next, five loops on your hook, pull through all five loops, then chain three. Then again, find that center chain and single crochet. Chain three, yawn over and find your, you, this will be your last cluster of the row, at least for me, for your scarf if you uh, chain 26. So let me get this one real quick. Okay, five loops on the hook, pull through all five loops, and chain three. Now to end the, the row, you want to find, you want a single crochet in the third chain of this beginning chain four. So if it helps to count from the bottom, one, two, three, and then put it here, because you need to have this chain here as the uh, as your chain one. So you're going to count one, two, three, and in this third chain you'll put a single crochet. And that is the end of row four. And now you can start to see little star burst and stuff. Okay, for row five you'll chain one and turn. And then the beginning single crochet you'll want to put another single crochet. Then you'll want to work in the center cluster here. You want to work three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, just like what you were doing before. You're going to be working in that center cluster. So one, two, and three, chain three, and then in the same stitch you work your next set of three double crochets. And then your, well, ah, finger got caught. And your next single crochet here, you'll put a single crochet. Then again, in the center cluster, you'll work your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, all worked in the same stitch.
one, two, and three. And then again, you'll work your single crochet in the single crochet. And then you'll work your last cluster here. Not cluster, but you know, I don't know, a V-stitch-ish kind of thingy. Anyway, when you get done with the, the last one, you'll single crochet in the last stitch of the row. And that is the end of row five. And you'll be repeating rows two through five um, until you reach your desired size. But I want to go through a few more rows with you. So we just finished row five and we're going to start the repeat now, which is row two. So you can find row two on the pattern and then we can continue. So in row two, remember at the beginning we do a half cluster. So you'll start off, you'll chain one and turn and you'll single crochet in that first single crochet. And now we're gonna yarn over and start our half cluster. So find that first set of three. When you do, pull up that first double crochet, pull through only two. Skip the next, grab up that final double crochet, three loops on your hook, pull through all three loops. And then you'll chain three, one, two, three, and you'll single crochet in that center chain and then you'll chain three again. Then you'll move on over here and find your next set of three and three. So this will be your first full cluster of this row. So we're doing just like we did last time, grabbing the only the first and third till we have our five double crochet cluster where we'll pull through all five loops. You'll chain three and then again find that center chain to single crochet in. And then chain three again. And then you'll work your next large cluster. Pull through all five loops, chain three, then find that center chain to single crochet in, chain three, and then we're going to finish by doing another half cluster here. So find your set of three here. When you do, grab up the first post. Be working on the first and last double crochet. You'll pull through all three, and then you'll work one double crochet in that last stitch. So then again we'll repeat, we'll continue the repeat, which would be repeating row three right now. So you'll chain four and turn. And then the very first stitch here, you're going to work three double crochets. then single crochet into the single crochet. And then you'll move over here and you'll be working in your clusters and again in that center cluster stitch you'll be working your three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, two, and three. And then again, you will single crochet in the single crochet. Then you'll move on over to your next set of cluster here and you'll repeat the three double crochet, chain three, and then three double crochet, all in the same stitch. Okay, and then you will want to single crochet in the single crochet. And then to end your row, you'll want to do three double crochets, chain one, and then double crochet all in the last stitch. Okay, so this little bitty cluster that we did here on the end, 
you'll want to work your three double crochets in that cluster. It's a little mini cluster, half a cluster. So once you've got your three double crochets worked in that little cluster, you'll chain one and then find this very last stitch of the row, which is a single crochet, and you'll work your double crochet. And that is the repeat of row three. Okay, as promised, I'm going to take you through those repeats again. So we just did a repeat of row three, so now I'm going to show you a repeat of row four. So what you do for row four is you want to chain one and turn. And you want to put a single crochet in that very first double crochet of the row. And then we have our first large cluster. This is the half uh, little shell that we had that only has three and then we're going to be using these three from this next one as well. So remember first and third. So you're going to pick up, you're going to yarn over first and pick up that first post. Pull up a loop, only pull through two. And you're going to do that for the third one as well. And then move on over and you're going to grab the first and third this side too. And we're going to do a large cluster. And then chain three, find that middle chain to single crochet into, and then chain three. And then again, you're going to do your next large cluster. I found it difficult when I was uh, making the afghan that uh, to remember how to begin and end a row was really annoying, and then having to re rewind the video and stuff. So. I know you probably already know the stitch because you've already done it a few times. Just need that refresher on your beginning and end until you get more of a hang of it. Okay, so I was able to get three full clusters in here. And I'm going to chain three. And remember, you're going to end this row by single crocheting in the third chain. And you can count from down to up. So one, two, three, and single crochet in this one. And that's the repeat of row four. Now for row five, again it says single crochet in the beginning stitch, so you only need to chain one and turn. And then you'll do uh, in this very first cluster here, you'll be doing three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets. And fix my pattern real quick. So go ahead and do your cluster, full cluster here. And every time you do a full cluster in the very first stitch like this, you know that your next row is going to be a half right off the bat. So if that helps you later on when you're making your afghan. Okay, so I did my three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets in that first cluster. And then I'm going to single crochet in that single crochet. And then you'll just repeat this for the row, putting three double crochets, chain three, three double crochets, and all of your cluster stitches, and single crocheting in your single crochet. There's uh, some gardening or something going on next to me. So if you can hear that, uh, I don't know if it's a weed whacker or blower or whatever. Every time I think that you're going to be able to hear it, I edit the video and I realize I never really had to say anything. So I don't want to say anything, but I think just in case there's somebody new and they think it's my video. Well, you can hear those birds. Actually, those are uh, parakeets. Okay, so single crochet in the very last stitch of your row. Okay, so you're going to chain, just make sure here, I don't like to assume, yeah, chain one and turn. Uh, you're going to be doing a, a single crochet, actually this is row two, sorry, row two, repeat. So you'll single crochet in the very first single crochet, and then this very first half here will be a half cluster, so you're only going to be using both of those. And then you'll pull through all three of your loops, 
chain three, and then single crochet in that middle. And then chain three again, and then now you're going to be working a large cluster here. Five loops on your hook, pull through all five loops, and chain three. Single crochet in that middle chain, chain three, then you're ready to do your next cluster. And you'll continue to do this down your row until you reach your very last half cluster, which I'm about to reach here. So, single crochet, and then you'll chain three, and then you'll pick up this very last, first and last double crochet, then pull through all three, and then I chain one, and then you'll double crochet in that single crochet there on the end. And that's how you will do the repeat for row two. And then again on the other video it'll be a repeat of row three. I hope it helped you and it didn't make you even more confused. So as you can see that's the clear of the back. That is like stars. And then on the front it leaves almost like a diamond shape. But if you lift it up like this, it's pretty solid. But if you look at it from the bottom, you have these like holes and stuff in it, which really makes it really cool. It's almost like a third side, a third look to the, to the blanket that's only unique to that particular view because you don't see it on this view. On the back you can if you do the same thing like this. But then here you clearly see the top pattern. It's a really nice stitch. I really like this one. And I hope you do too. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do the border to this. In order to do the border, you're going to need another color, worsted weight yarn. And it's a pretty easy border to do. I try to make it as simple as possible. After such an afghan like this, you need something simple. So go ahead and grab your, your worsted weight yarn and your 5 millimeter size H hook and we'll get started. Okay. So this is going to be the first row of the border. Now, very important that you're going to need to crochet very loosely doing this chain around the outside of your afghan because you don't want it to pull. You want it to be loose. So, okay, to begin, uh, I, I chained one and I cut my yarn, but I'm not doing this with the tutorial yarn, so just ignore that because uh, you're going to be working in the space. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, exchange this color for the, the new color, but I just want to make it simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to attach my yarn, and you can, you can attach it by slip stitching, which is just pulling through the loop, or you can just stop, yarn over again, and make a single crochet attachment, which is what I'm going to do here. Okay, so once you attach your yarn in that first space, by the way, uh, it goes without saying that this is the top, this is the bottom, and these are the sides. So this will be the first side because I'm right handed, so this is the one I'm going to reach first. So that will be first side, this will be second side. So on top side, once you attach your yarn, you're going to be chaining, yep, okay, so you're going to chain two, and then you're going to find the spaces, and if you look ending on uh, the row where you have this, these two spaces on the, the end make it very easy to be able to see your stitch. So I recommend ending where uh, you, you have clear definition between your, your chains and this one just seems to be the easiest one for me and this was the repeat of row two, right? Yeah, so row two is a good one to stop on. Whichever one is flat, not the one, not on a row where it actually goes up a little bit. You want to stop on either of the rows that have like the chain spaces in it. So chain two and find that first chain space and single crochet in it. And then you'll re repeat this for the row. Again, you don't want to chain too tightly. So 
chain two, go into the next chain three space and single crochet. Chain two, go in the next chain three space, single crochet. And you will do this all along the top until you reach your very last space here on the end. Okay, when you get to the end of your row here, I just single crocheted in the very last stitch of my row. Now you want to chain three. We're going to be turning to our side here. Now, the very first picture that I have here shows me it's the space. Like I'm pointing down like this in the picture. This is where my next row starts, so it's this bottom stitch. This single crochet, where we used to do a single crochet to end the row, I would put a single crochet in that single crochet. So basically you just ended the row with that single crochet. Now you're going to be using uh, chains of three. So chain three, find this big space on the side here, and single crochet. And again, you want to chain three, and I think we're only using... Uh, the big spaces and then the bottom in between. So there's the big chain three spaces, that's obvious, but then there's a space that you can use kind of like midway point in between to bridge the gap. You can use this one, you can use this one, whichever one uh, seems to work better for you. Single crochet in there and then chain three and it'll bring you to the next chain three space where you'll single crochet here. And then again, you can find your next chain three space, find a stitch in between to bridge that gap, and single crochet in it. Then chain three, and then find the next chain three space, and single crochet in it. And that's how you're going to continue down your side here. And I had a total of 30 spaces down this side. But again, the numbers may vary, but I just like to throw it out there for people who want to uh, just know if they're in or around that number, if they're making the same size as me, I don't know. So at the corner, again, you're going to chain three and turn. Now we're on the bottom side. Again, super easy on the bottom side because you're only going to be working in the chain spaces on either side of these upside down clusters here. Remember, we worked all in the same stitch. Now we have these chain spaces on either side. So we're going to be using those. It's pretty big space and when I try to pull it over here, which would be where I would need to do my next one, it pulls. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and single crochet again in that same big space here, which will help bridge the gap. Bring it closer to my center here. And you want to chain three or two if it's better for you. But I want to keep this first row loose. And again, I'm just finding those chain three spaces on either side of my cluster here. So chain three and single crochet in that chain. And keep working your way down. You'll have a lot more than I will to get to the end. So this is my very corner space here. And I believe again you have uh, to chain three. Yeah. This bottom part here, I had a total of 29 chain spaces, which was the same that I had at the very top. So that was cool. So again, you want to chain three and turn to your very last and final side. And for this one, I tried to stay. Uh, only in the main big stitches here because you have a lot of big stitches on this side so I just basically tried to stay in those to make it simple. So I have a chain three and if I try to go into this one will it pull? It does but very slightly. I mean if you wanted to go ahead and do another single crochet let's say I'm going to go ahead and put one here to end this row because this is the very final stitch of this row. I'm going to go ahead and just single crochet in that one. And then I'll chain three. And then I'll put one in that big old space. And then now I'm going to start putting them in my big spaces. Chain three, chain two, whatever works for you. 
whatever keeps this side from pulling. And again, chain threes work a lot better because you're going to be bridging this gap this time and going right into the next big space. I tried to do like I did uh, in the, on this side going in, the in-between ones, and I ended up with like double the stitches. So chain three and just use those big spaces on this last side. Chain three, skip over that space and just go into that final large space at the end. And you can chain three if you want and slip stitch in that beginning chain just to keep it. I mean, you could technically just slip stitch, but I think it's going to look better if you do a chain one or a chain two and slip stitch in that very first single crochet that we did. It's very flexible, this border. And that's what I wanted to make it very flexible. Single crochet. Oh, the second border is super easy. So since we're slip stitched already in this single crochet, just chain one and slip stitch again right in uh, slip stitch. Chain one and single crochet in the beginning single crochet. And then you're going to chain three and just single crochet in your single crochet. Chain three, single crochet in your next single crochet. And you're going to do this all the way around. Chain three, single crochet in your next single crochet. Chain three, find your next single crochet, single crochet. Can't get any easier than that, huh? Chain three, single crochet in your single crochet. And if you find any places where it may be pulling, like you wish you had another chain three or something like that, this is the, this is the time to fix it. Because if it's pulling now, it's probably going to pull later as well. Like this corner here, I don't think I'm happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and do a single crochet there in the chain three itself. I still have a single crochet in my single crochet here. Typically I would just chain three and then single crochet in this next one, but I don't like the way it's pulling here. So I'm just going to do a single crochet in my chain three. Then I'm going to chain three and then just go right into my next single crochet. And that loosened it up a little bit there in the corner. Then chain three, find the next single crochet. Just going to keep doing this all the way around. So continue to do this all the way around. My uh, battery is getting low. I need to switch it out. And then I will show you how to finish the very last row, which is the, uh, the butterfly stitch shells. I really, really love the look of those butterfly stitch shells. That one seemed fine, so I didn't really need to add anything there. So did this one seem Both seem good. Okay, so I'm going to continue this all the way around, change my battery, and I will see you in a minute. I changed out my battery. And I was just thinking uh, on this afghan here. We'll be doing uh, one of the shells and the stitches, and then we'll be single crocheting to the neck. So it takes uh, two, pretty much, to make the border. So I thought, you know... Since we have one more row left on the side, which is our final side, this would be the time to count. Starting from our very first row here. Because I think it's going to be best if we end on an even number. So we can go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. This would be 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So I'd actually have... 26, which is an even number. I mean, I'm going to have to make sure when I get there, but this would be the time to make adjustments if you are short. So this again is chain three in the single crochet. So if I don't have an even number all the way around, I may have to back up and in the corner, like I did before, add another chain to it just to 
add one more chain space just to make it an even number easy enough to fix. As long as it's even, your uh, border will work out. Okay, and I'm just going to, this is the 26th, so I'm just going to slip stitch in that beginning single crochet here. Slip stitch in beginning Okay. Okay, and uh, like I said, if you you want to count to make sure you have an even number, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, one, two, three, four, five, twenty-six. Okay, and I do I have twenty-six even number all the way around, and I'm ready for my final row of my border. So this is the butterfly stitch. This is a stitch that I discovered when I was messing around with yarn. I used to do that a lot. I discovered the uh, raspberry stitch like this and a few others. Cluster stitch, uh, the mesh stitch that I use for a lot of stuff. Anyway, so to do this, go ahead and you want to chain one. Just bring yourself a little bit up. Or you can single crochet in this very first one if you prefer. Maybe better. Um, so what you want to do is you want to insert your hook into the chain three space and pull up a loop. Then you want to yarn over and only go through one of those loops, leaving the other one alone here. And without yarning over, you want to go right back into that same stitch and pull up a loop. Then you'll yarn over and you're going to pull through two and then pull through two just like you do uh, on a double crochet. So essentially when you get to this part, it's a double crochet. So you'll yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then chain one. Chain one is a very important part of the stitch. Always remember to chain one. So I'll show you that again. You're going to need to make three butterfly stitches in this one chain space. So that was our first. So we'll do our second, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, only pull through one of those loops. Then without yarning over, just insert your hook again, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then important, chain one at the end. That's two, we need to do one more. So insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, only pull through one. Insert your hook back into that same stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. That's our first butterfly stitch shell. Now you want to, because you already chained one at the end of your butterfly stitch here, so you don't need to chain one again. You'll just go into the next chain three space and single crochet and chain one. Now you're ready to move over to your next chain three space. Again, you want to insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one loop, insert your hook back into that same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. And you're going to do this for a total of three times in this one chain three space. Sorry, my yarn was, uh, I was on the end of my yarn. Had to loosen it up here. Okay, so that's my third butterfly stitch. So I'm going to single crochet and chain one in my next chain three space. And then I'm going to go into my next chain three space and start my next three butterfly stitches. You want to continue this pattern all the way around. I know it takes a little time to get used to doing the butterfly stitches, but you'll get it. As you can see, it's starting to, to come out a little bit better here. Then you go into the next one, uh, which is butterfly. Just going to keep alternating. I know some may be mad that I'm not being so exact about everything, but I found even when I do that, it frustrates people because theirs come out differently. I prefer to just put the power in your hand to make the decisions whether you want to add another one or another two chains. Just let you know what you absolutely need to know, like it's uh, an even number. 
and then you can go from there. And you can always do the even number on that last, I should say on the second border row. So as long as you just get a somewhat even where you're not pulling, the, for the first border row, the most important thing is that you, you don't chain tightly. Just get some chains to be worked with. And as long as it's even enough, then you can make adjustments on the next row. So I'm just going to continue my three butterfly stitches in one chain three space and then single crochet and chain one in your next space. And just keep it loose. I'm so close because I was showing you that. But you can see how I'm starting to get this nice little border around the edges here. I'm going to come up to this corner here. Put my single crochet chain one. Just want to make sure that this corner here isn't going to pull too much. If it is pulling too much and you uh, finding it difficult to it's going to pull or something. Like mine, it's fine. It may not have ended up right in the corner, but it's not pulling. So I'm just going to keep doing my regular. But if it was pulling for you, you could uh, you can actually add one more butterfly stitch here, which would give you a little bit more give there in the corner if you needed it. You can also change up the border. You don't have to use butterfly stitches. You can do a whole other border on the end. But I really like the look of the butterfly shells, butterfly stitch shells. They have this like unique texture to them. It's so hard for you to see on camera right now. But on yours I'm sure you can see it. It's got a very unique texture. They kind of have a lot of give and pull right in the shell itself, giving all this texture within the shell itself. So if you have never done the butterfly stitch, I really recommend that you give it a shot. Okay, I've reached my very last chain three space. I just did my last butterfly stitch space here. All these yarn in my way now. And you can single crochet and chain one in that very last space and then just find that big space here on the side if you want to connect uh, or you can connect on the top just find a place to connect on the very first one slip stitch there that way it's all connected and then chain one and cut your yarn and you can see that it leaves this really cool looking shell border butterfly stitch shell border on the outside just adds that much more texture on the outside which I really like Okay guys, that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and share and comment down below. It really helps my channel out a lot. Also, if you haven't done it yet, you can always get notified whenever I release a new tutorial. You can go next to the subscribe button and click and choose all notifications to always be notified whenever I release a new video. Um, I also have two groups on Facebook. I know some people are trying to get away from Facebook. I understand that. Uh, but I do have two crochet channels there if you want to check them out. One's called Crochet Zone Public and the other one is called Crochet for the Masses. If you're looking for just uh, patterns, then you can, I would check out Crochet Zone Public. And if you're just looking for more of a private group to share, then Crochet for the Masses is the place for you. Uh, also, I have a community on Pinterest where on my community board, I let designers go there and post links to their free patterns. Everything is spam free, the direct links to their site so that way you don't have to go you know, digging around trying to find the pattern. The pattern that's on the pin is the pattern that will be when you click on that uh, pin. So I recommend checking that out. It's a great place to find your next project. Also I have a newsletter so if you would prefer to find out what's going on that week for me that way I do release one every time I have something to put on it. So you won't get spammed because it's probably the least uh, 
you know, I like to compile some stuff up before I finally send it there. So it'll update you on everything that's going on for that week or two. Uh, so I think that's it. Oh, I also have a patron page. If you want to support my channel, I really, really, really appreciate all my patrons and that they give me. Uh, it really helps my business. I can't tell you how much it helps my business. So if you like this channel and want to support me and this channel, please consider being a patron. You can find the link down below and check that out. And I really, really appreciate all you patrons and all the people that watch my videos, all that you guys do for me. So thank you so very much for watching.